my name is Kurt Roth. Um, and earlier today they asked what my dream was. Um, and okay. so um, they asked what my dream was, and when they threw me what I initially thought was a head of lettuce, um, which was actually a green ball, um, I said my dream was helping people, right? Um, and I, I truly try to help people, uh, but helping people can mean so many different things to so many different people. And the way that I approach helping people is that I try to help people understand. And it's not just understand in the sense that when you understand, you have the ability to read a newspaper and say, oh, I've read this and I think this is the great idea until next week's edition comes out and you read something that says something slightly different. You're like, this is, this is my new view. I want you to understand so that you can figure out what's going on so that you can figure out what's, what's happening in your life and the world around you so that you can have your views. And the way that I want to present that today is looking at some public financing projects, uh, which has been some research of mine and some interest of mine, and, and the actual impacts of what's going on and, and kind of this interaction between the thought process of what should occur versus what actually does occur. Okay? And, and the goal of helping you understand how to figure out things like I said, it isn't just the surface of what it sounds like or what it seems to be like. I want to truly understand what's going on. Because when you truly understand what's going on, you truly have the ability to make that change. Specifically, I'm going to talk about sport franchises. Not something you tend to think about with your public financing projects, but at the end I'll try to tie this in to things that can occur both with the sports industry but also across the world in all kinds of public financing projects. Okay? Um, the idea behind building a sports stadium or bringing a sport franchise into your town is that when we bring this franchise into town, we're going to create jobs. Right? Creating jobs is clearly a good thing. If we can create more employment and we can create more income for everybody that's doing it, wages go up, incomes go up, people are happier, there's more civility through the society, things occur in a very good manner. The stated outcome is very clear. They simply say, look, this is a great idea because if we build this stadium and we create a job, when we create that job, that person now has an income they didn't have before. And because of that, they can take that income, go into their stores, spend the income, and as they spend that income, it creates more income for the workers and the owners of that store. Now that, now that they have this additional income, they go to the next store, spend their money, which creates wages and in, income increases and jobs for more people, and this continues to occur on down the line. As long as these people are spending their money, it should have a huge impact on our local economy. It's not just that job I created at the stadium, it's the fact that when I create that job, it has this domino or multiplying effect that occurs throughout our whole economy, causing all of these jobs to be created, all of these incomes to go up, which clearly would make us all happier. Right? So I get to thinking about this, and I look at it and I go, all right, if this occurs, there's three potential outcomes when we build a stadium, right? One is we build this stadium where we, we entice the sports franchise to start and we create jobs. And as we create jobs, it has this multiplying effect on all of these incomes for all of these other people, which would be a great outcome. The way that we measure that is we call this economic impact. That is, when I create a job or when I create this industry, does it have an economic impact on the locality? Does it create jobs and incomes for everybody else around us? If it does, that's awesome. We should be doing a lot of these projects because as we do these projects, we're creating these jobs, we're creating this income. Great. The other thing is that we, it costs us money to build these stadiums. It costs us money to get these franchises in town. And when we spend this money, it could create some jobs and some income but just barely enough to cover the costs of what it costs us to build. In that case, I'm going to argue that that's an okay outcome. Right? If we do that, that's fine. We've covered the costs of what we brought in, but we're not really creating anything extra. Right? If you spend $20 to get $20, you're no better off than you are. Right? And the last outcome is the one that I worry about. The last outcome is that we spend these massive amounts of money to hopefully get all these jobs and income, and in the end, we've spent money to find that nothing occurred. 
And I was thinking about this and we're trying to figure it out. And we go, this really, really matters. Why does this matter so much? It matters so much because we're spending a lot of money on these stadiums. Right? Just in the last few years, New York Yankees built a new stadium in 2009. If you're a Yankees fan or not a Yankees fan, uh, you may look at this and go, but they use private money to build their stadium. And you would have to be absolutely correct. They spent over a billion dollars building their own stadium, and the way that the community allowed them to raise that capital to build the new stadium is through these things called tax-exempt bonds. What's unique about this is usually municipalities issue tax-exempt bonds to fund things like schools. And I don't know if you would agree with this statement, but the Yankees is not exactly a school. <laughs> so when we think about this, they're using these tax-exempt bonds, and yes, they use private monies to actually build the stadium, but the estimated cost is somewhere around $220 million to taxpayers to issue these bonds on behalf of the Yankees. Okay? So although the politicians were saying, oh, it's going to create this economic impact and we should do all of this to help the Yankees out, okay, it's public finance, or it's privately financed, but we're just going to help them with bonds, the taxpayers are paying $220 million worth of taxes on these bonds. In 2000 and 2003, um, Cincinnati decided that the Bengals and Reds both needed new stadiums. The city of Cincinnati spent over $600 million on those two projects. Meadowlands, uh, something close to home, right down the street from us, spent $1.6 billion building a new stadium. It was initially estimated to be about $1.2 billion. In that $1.2 billion estimate, it was supposed to be split three ways. New York Giants, New York Jets, and the New York taxpayers. We were on the foot for just over $400 million of building that stadium. Okay. That is our money hard at work. We're using our dollars to build $400 million worth of that stadium. And the Colts and Twins, you can see, both spent $600 and $350 million, respectively. These stadiums are very, very large projects. These are a lot of public monies being used to build these stadiums. So the simple question I should ask is, does it actually create these jobs, right? Because every time they build these stadiums, if you read the reports before the stadium exists, they always say, it's gonna create an economic impact. It's gonna have a huge economic impact. What they actually estimate is they estimate this multiplier that I discussed earlier to be something like 10 times, which means for every $100,000 job I create, I create a million dollars worth of economic impact. So the politician stands up there and says, should we be using these public funds? Yes, it's gonna create jobs, it's gonna create incomes. We're gonna create millions of dollars worth of economic impact. This is gonna be great for our community. Like I said, if they do, that's great. The question is, do they? In 2003, two researchers by the name of Coates and Humphreys came out with a research project looking at metropolitan statistical areas. And the idea of a metropolitan statistical area is that you take this huge area, right now we're in the New York metropolitan statistical area, right? They don't look just at the city itself because they understand that people that live around that city also consume that city's goods. So if we look at metropolitan statistical areas and we measure things like retail and food and restaurants and liquor industry and things like that, when we build stadiums, do we actually create an economic impact? They want to know two things. One, does employment go up? And two, do wages go up? Those are the two things that are argued when we use our public monies. They do the study, and they find zero effect. Zero effect. So what they're saying is that whenever we build these stadiums, whenever franchises enter or leave towns, we find absolutely no effect on employment. We don't see more jobs. We see no effect on incomes. We don't see wages go up. So we're dropping somewhere around, um, on average, we spend about $400 million worth of public funds for every stadium we build. And what are we getting out of it? No economic impact. So something interesting happened after 2003. Seattle Supersonics, which is the NBA team up in Seattle, they were the NBA team up in Seattle, wanted to leave Seattle. 
The city of Seattle was suing the supersonic, saying you cannot leave. The reason you cannot leave is because you create an economic impact. Oh yeah, do you have a contract at our stadium that you have to stay there and play? You create an economic impact, and because you create an economic impact, we need you here. The city of Seattle needs you here. We need you to keep our jobs and to keep our wages high. I found two interesting things that come out of it. First one is, for the first time in history, the Seattle Supersonics walked into the courtroom, sat down, looked at the court, was speaking to the community of Seattle, and said, we have no economic impact. It's the first time a sports team has ever admitted that I know of. Okay. Because every time they want to new build, build a new stadium, what do they always say? We're going to create an economic impact. That's why you should fund our stadium. The second thing they did, uh, I believe it was Humphreys that was at the trial, and they asked him because of this research saying, OK, so you find no effect. But that's on a metropolitan statistical area. Those are huge. Haven't you looked at something more local, like a county or a city? I mean, isn't it theoretically possible that even though you find no evidence for a whole metropolitan statistical area, that it is possible that there's an, a local economic impact in the county? He says, I have never tested that. I can't answer that question. 2008, John Jacina and I did research on exactly that. What we did was we said, we agree. It is possible that the metropolitan statistical areas are so big that you see no effect. Let's look at counties. So we look at county data, we look at the different industries, we look at our retail, we look at our food and drinking, we look at the liquor, we look at all these industries that are supposed to have this positive economic impact. And what we do is we do all these statistical analysis, finding that when teams enter, certain things occur, when teams leave, certain things occur, the ironic thing is, is that we find no change in employment. So all of this money we're spending has no effect on employment within any of these industries. And we do find an effect on wages. The problem is, is the wages as a team enter your city, fall, and as the team leaves, go up. Which means the economic impact is not what they claim it is. We're not creating jobs. We're not creating incomes. If anything, we're having the opposite effect, but there's observationally no economic impact when these franchises that are in these towns. That had a huge thing for me. And the reason it had a huge thing for me, and the, the theme of this topic is, Ted, what's your dream? Redefine dream. I want you to know where your public monies go. Because remember, when we're talking about public monies, it's not an unlimited supply. If we're spending $400 million for a stadium, that's $400 million we're either not spending on something else, or $400 million that's no longer in your pocket as a New Jersey taxpayer. Right? The money necessarily comes from someone. If we're paying for Meadowlands Stadium, that means we don't have that money in our pocket to spend for ourselves. Like I said, from the beginning I said, my dream is helping people out. It's helping people understand what's going on. Think about this. When you hear about these public funding projects, I want you to be able to think about the public funding projects and whether it's truly gonna have an impact on what goes on. And I want you to be able to make the decision on whether it's truly worth it or not. Because understand, every time they've come up with a new stadium project, since Boats and Humphreys research came out in 2003, since my research in 2008, there's been other research looking at Olympic economic impacts and World Cup economic impacts. All of them seem to find the same thing. But every time there's a new project that comes out, Meadowlands Stadium, Yankee Stadium, somebody stands up there and says, this time it's different. Our town is different. When we build it, we're going to have an economic impact. Think about that. Because it hasn't really changed. And we haven't found any evidence that has changed over time. Thank you very much.